bid you all good morning, good evening, good night to wherever you're watching this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins, broadcasting from the heart of BC, well, almost the heart of BC, Merritt, British Columbia. Vancouverites faced with soaring house prices consider co-ownership. I get it. This is from this from today's date. Well, yesterday, but it was updated today. People are asking me, Mike, 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 co-ownership. I have friends calling me, friends e emailing me, contact me on social media. They knew I was on the fence to buy for so many years, but because everything's out of reach, should I buy in a co-ownership? Co well, here's the question. Or is everybody willing to lose equally? You see, usually when – what do you do when the price of the value of the house goes down? A lot of times people that buy in co-ownership are in FOMO mode thinking that they need to get a share or a piece of property, right? So a piece of property before it goes down and then they equally divide the share. Then what happens when property taxes go up? Then what happens with this? Yes, I understand. It's divided equally depending on the square footage owned by each participant. But then you've got to ask yourself a bunch of other questions like um, – you know, how much hydro do I pay for my little section? How much do I get for this? What do I get if we sell? How do we divide the whole... You know what I'm saying? It just keeps going on and on, and you start really asking a lot of questions. So ask the questions before you jump into this. So I've had a lot of people asking me these questions over the week. And, uh, yeah, let's let's this. Vancouver rates faced with soaring house prices consider co-ownership so here it is guys a group of people buy together sharing the cost based on the square footage each of them will get co-ownership uh, between friends and family have become more common in hot markets such as vancouver and toronto no not hot markets it's not a hot market it's an unaffordable market for the canadian proper that's what it is it's not a hot market it's a ripoff market and don't don't make me show you what you could buy in west palm beach for 90 grand no don't, don't make me go there because i will a recent survey found that Vancouver to be the least affordable region in Canada on an average uh, sale price of $1.19 million. I bet you 100 to 1 that $1.19 million house that you see or the average house looks like it has five years left, left on, on foundation before it falls apart. It's it's a, probably a complete teardown in most situations and probably needs six hundred grand worth of repair. $1.19 million. If someone said, Mike, I have $1.19 million to buy something in the U.S., I'm like, that's too much money. Well, where do you want to go for that much? Like, I mean, I could get you, like, I could find you something for $266. I helped one of our viewers. Uh, he will, he, he was, he's moving to, um, Jacksonville, Florida. And I said, Oh, Jacksonville, he got a job there. Uh, we, sh we screen shared. I showed him places in this and that. And then I showed him, uh, uh he was going to go down and rent. Then, he kind of looked at what the prices to own was, and he saw that it's just cheaper to own. Even if I do f sell the property for what I bought it for five years down the road, I still won't be so far behind. And at least I'll have my own place to do what I want in it when I want, right? So I helped him find a place for one sixty six, four bedroom, uh, four bedroom, three bathroom, uh, with a pool and a small guest house in the back for under two hundred thousand in Jacksonville, Florida. A really nice house, poured concrete, orange clay roof. And he said he's going to come on the show after he moves down. But he he went down, saw the place, bought it, went for a few job interviews, and he's he's got two jobs confirmed. So it's up to him where he takes from this. But he he's bailing from Canada, right? Vancouver News 1130. New strategy is emerging for those looking to buy in the red hot Vancouver real estate market, buying a house with several other people. So then you're going to have so many people on title. Then when you're going to have to start changing things around it's it's just going to be tough if 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 you want to sell your your portion you might have to sell out to somebody else at what the going I don't I don't even want to get I, that's a nightmare uh specializes uh, this is a realtor here specializes in private co-ownership and finding uh pieces of property suitable for multiple families to live in so they're massaging people into believing this is normal oh yeah the seven families to a house what are they going to do if they have occupancy laws. In the state of Florida, there's occupancy laws. Okay? For me, okay, me, my wife, my three kids, and my mom live here. My mom moved in. Because I I, re I lost my dad not too long ago. So, I'm a, you know what I'm saying. So, we have six. Now, if we were living in Florida, we need, for every two people, you need one bathroom by law. So, two, four, six. My house has five bathrooms. So I'm okay. 
So the occupancy of my house could go up to like pretty much 10 people if I really wanted to. But that's not what I'm doing. But I'm saying for every, so if, if a couple has a, a baby, they need to find a two bedroom, they, uh, two bedroom, two bath. They can't have a one bedroom, one bath. They can't, they, it won't work. So if this house that they're sharing has two bathrooms in it and there's three families, okay, let's say eight or 10 people, occupancy moves in uh, by law. Uh, you got too many people uh, occupying this property. They're going to have to ask people to leave. So how does that work if occupancy passes laws on that? They did it in Florida. With the rise in costs of real estate and growing sense of isolation in society, people have realized that by coming together and buying property together can both save money and actually afford to get into the market, he explains. A group of, a group of people buy together sharing the cost based on the square footage each of them will be living in. I, I would have never fathomed that professionals... Uh, in Canada, with education, would have to move in with other families to avo uh, to afford a, a, a menial home, like nothing. When you look at these homes that these people are sharing, it's like it's like this. It's like um, oh, 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 okay. So yeah, I could get one of these in Virginia for like under a hundred thousand American, a three hundred bucks a month mortgage. What's the big deal? Oh, it's Vancouver, the best place in the world. For example, Mount Pleasant Home listed for $1.78 million may be out of reach for a solo buyer. Wow. But it's already been divided into four suites. If four people family split the cost, they each would be paying $400,000 and $500,000 for a home of their own in the city's most desirable areas. $400,000. I'm going to have to show you what the hell you can get in 33309 area code. I'm going to have to show you. I'm sick and tired of this. 400,000. So let's get our trusty uh, calculator out here. You guys are seeing real deal information here. Uh, foreign exchange. What's my location? Calculator. Here we go. Let, we we got to see what the hell is going on here. 400 large Canadian. We need 400 large. That's 300 and, that's 301,000 American. I'm sick and tired of this crap. I'm sick and tired of this. Seeing this, this, this people and people, uh, believing that they're, they're, they're doing so well. Ooh, that's in downtown Miami. Look at that little castle there. But that's five hundred thousand U.S. Even though it's it's still it's still less than half of that house. That's still less than half of the house they were just showing in the image there. Let's see if I can get this thing to work here. It, yeah, here it goes. Oops, it's not. It's giving me a tough time here to open. There it goes. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, that's less than half of what that house is. And this thing is beautiful. Look at the, the neighbors. They're all like beautiful man little mini mansions everywhere. And that's in that's in a good part of Miami too. That's uh on Southwest 16th by is that 440? Where is that? Is that is that Collins Avenue? Is that really downtown? Yeah, it is. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is you could get like in very good areas. So look, a condo, 175, two bedroom, one bath. But this is a luxury apartment. Look at your view. This is a luxury apartment. You know what I'm saying? Not like what they're offering you. In, no, this is just an average condo. Average condo. But this is average. But this condo, this condo in Vancouver is like 800 grand. You know what I'm saying? But let's go to that range here. Let's go back to this range here. 400K, okay? Uh, 300K, sorry. 300K, 301,000. Let's actually put that price in. Price. So we'll put 200 to 300 and then let's zoom it out sorry and then let's go no 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 multifamily no 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 we want we don't want apartments we want everything we want everything let's zoom it out just trying to get there we go and we get zoom it out here find something nice yeah there we go so with your your entrance fee into that little suite you you could go you buy look that's in that's in that's in Buckhead Boca Raton. This this is a really really sought after area. Boca Raton means like the rat's mouth. 
You're over by intercoastal little lake here. Look at this little little lake. That's good enough for me. You're looking at about uh, seven seven about seven eight hundred dollars a a month. All right, here we go. Look at this place. It even has a, a wraparound driveway to drop your people off and drive away. You could film Scarface in this thing. Look how big this thing is. Pools. It's got a big pool in it, private pool. Look at the back way. Your back, your, your, oh, that's your entry. Sorry, that's your entry. The back has the same thing. Look at that. That's your house. For how much? $2.99. That gets you in for your little share. And it's got five bathrooms. So again, let's take a step back. Okay, guys. A lot of times when you see more bathrooms in a house than bedrooms, it's because of occupancy laws they used to have or still have in Florida. So technically, 10 people could live in this house in Florida because there's five bathrooms. So look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. You know how much this would cost for you to build anywhere in Canada, even on the cheapest, you buy the cheapest land in Canada. $10,000 for, for five acres, the cheapest you can. You know how much it would cost to build this house? Like 600 grand in Canada. And not even furnished too. So I don't know, man. You get this. You can get a place like this for under a thousand bucks a month. So that's what I'm trying to say. So let's go back. Let's look at this one. This little castle here for two eighty. So let's go back here. Let's let's go back here. Okay. For example, Mom Plus and Home one point seven eight million may be out of reach for a solar buyer. Of course it is, and it always will be because people won't make enough money. But it's already been divided into four suites. Look at that. 400 grand gets you in and 500,000 for a home of their own in one of the city's most desirable areas. Okay, if you have that much, they're going to probably want you to put down 80, 70, 80,000 down to get into this thing because they need that much as a whole to cover the deal, right? Like this, you put that much down, you get into a house like this. Already, you're, you're in. And if you have to work minimum wage, both partners need to work minimum wage just to get, they could do their uh, 790 a month. Just to get it off the ground. Just just to just how immigrants came to Canada originally and broke their backs, like my dad did, my, my grandparents did. They broke their backs basically building a future for myself. And and hopefully me, I could do the same and build a future for my kids. This you could do it like that because it's feasible. You know, paying seven, eight hundred dollars a month. It's okay. Then you have three bedrooms, three baths, but you have a very spacious property, right? You're okay. And, oh my god, there's no work in my in Florida. There's 20 million people there. It's almost the population of Canada. And the reason why people are asking, why do you keep talking about Florida? It's because I lived there for many years. I know. I've been there and I, I am in contact with, I talked to my friend there today. He's selling his house in the fashion district in, in, in um, Pompano Beach area. And he can't get 180 for his house. It's a five bedroom, three bath, uh, two story house. He can't get 180 for it. In the fashion district in Fort and uh, north of Fort Lauderdale and 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 and, and, and uh, Pompano Beach, he can't do it. Co-ownerships between friends and family have become more common in hot markets such as Vancouver, Toronto. Again, they're not hot markets, okay, guys. This is on affordability levels. That's what it is. That's what I'm seeing it as. You know what I'm saying? First off, we go in there with similar timelines, so expectation would would be going in with five to a 10-year timeline or a 15 to 20-year timeline so that we know in advance that someone's not just going to walk away and upset the cart, he says. Whoa, so they don't want people to walk away, so you're stuck. You're stuck. So what do you do after, like if you want to move to a place like this and you realize you've been ripped off all your life and you say, okay, well, let's move it out. Let's go. Like, you don't like Florida? Okay, man, we move to Atlanta. Move to Georgia. So many good places in Georgia. I'm talking to friends there. Look at this. Okay. So you get sold on one of these. This one is just south of south of Atlanta. Five bedroom, four four bath. Especially if you work from home or you do coding or whatever, coding or processing or whatever you do. There it is. Four five bedrooms, four baths. You're looking at about seven ninety a month for this. So and especially if you're working from home. This would be perfect. But I, I'm not understanding. Like I'm I'm still not getting this. Okay. First off, we need to go with a, sim a similar timeline. So the 15, 20 years, we got that. Uh, you meet with the lawyer, develop a partnership agreement, and then one. Uh, then at the end of the day, the partnership agreement is key. If you've addressed as many questions and concerns in advance, you don't have to worry about them. And at the inevitable time when you want to go your separate ways. The biggest risk involved in having co-owner 
who is unable to pay their share of the mortgage, which could result in everyone losing their home and being liable for the balance. There you go. Right there. That's the most important key they left at the end. Buddy says this scenario is rare, but it's why he recommends a strong partnership agreement and realtor family cooperation agreements. Guys, be be careful. This here, let's go find one in Virginia for 70 grand. Hold on. This right here, watch this. Let's go down to Virginia. Heck, let's just go to the Carolinas. I'll even find one that even looks like that. Watch this. There we go. I'll even find one, but these are really nice though. There we go. I found this one looks really nice. This this is the yeah, I mean this is really nice. Holy crap, it's like four hundred dollars a month for this. Man, that's that's a lot of money. Four hundred a month. Wow. Sorry, eleven hundred a month. Eleven hundred dollars a month is a lot of money, man. That's what I pay uh for my house in a year in carbon tax. Thank God Canada signed up for this carbon tax. It's gonna help a lot of people. Look, there it is. That kind of looks like it. Does that look like it right there? Oh, this one's old. This one here looks this one here looks nice and fresh. 269. So your portion is still bigger to buy a suite in this thing than it is to buy this whole house and have it have your own house. See, Americans don't know how good they have it. We're limited to very, very few cities. And we're stuck. We're screwed. This is uh, South Carolina, by the way. You're bored. Oh, what's there to do? You go to Fayetteville. You could go to Atlanta. You go to Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia's huge. You go to Atlanta. You go down to Jacksonville with the kids. Go down seven, six, seven-hour drive. Go down to Orlando with the kids. There's so much to do. So don't tell me there's nothing to do in these places. There's no jobs. If there's no jobs, why are there all these homes? And, uh, you know, and oh, yeah, where the wages don't pay. You go there and make your own wage. I came to Merritt. There's no jobs. There's not hardly any jobs in Merritt. But I came here and made my wage. I made my wage. I'm not making this up or anything. I'm t telling you. You know? So anyways, guys, I wanted to throw some housing out there. Kind of freshen it up a bit with these new listings that just came up. So. Look at this. A whole portion of an island. Look. A whole section here. Look. This whole section right here. Wow. What, you have like a shed, a warehouse. <sighs> Depends what you want to do. You could tailor a house. Let's go to Florence, South Carolina. Look, 205, three bedroom. That's a decent area. It's a fixer-upper, but you're paying fixer-upper price. You're not paying half a million dollars for two rooms in there. Two room suite. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just like severely, severe. Let's go to Fayetteville. Let's go up here to this next state. There it is. You could buy all kinds of stuff for around 200 large. Look at this. That's in Homestead Park in Apex. That's nice. I like how they take the photos in black and white. But it's still, again, it's affordable. Back in the early 80s, if you bought a house, let me show you. In the early 80s, if you bought a house like a fixer-upper like this, a lot of people would know you're starting out, you bought your first house, you're starting your family, and you're building up. But you bought starter home prices. You're not paying one. What was it? One point four million bucks. What was this thing? Average house, one point seven eight million. Are you out of your tree? Oh, Mike, those are desirable areas. Okay, well, let's go find a desirable area in Miami Beach. Let's see how much this stuff costs. Well, let's go. I'll show you the desirable area south of uh, east of ninety five. So you want to stay east of ninety five if you want to find something desirable. Okay, you want to be along the intercoastal here so you can park your boat in your backyard. And there's so much. Look at all the stuff you can buy. And these are luxury towers. These are like true luxury towers right by the beach. Look at that. The beach is right. Look at the beach right there. Two ninety nine. This is on Collins Avenue, Sunny Isles Beach, Florida. Look at that. There's the beach right there. Blue, blue, blue water. And right now it's like 30 centigrade there. Look at that. That's, this is what you call a luxury condo in my opinion. You sit out there, you enjoy your evenings, your sunsets. You know, this is more like when I get a bit older with the wife and we just kind of retire to something like that. You know, there it is. Look, that's that's what I'm talking about. You want a house? There's lots of houses here. Look, a duplex with two units. This is this is this is like this is like luxury right here in South Beach, right here. Two hundred and nine thousand, two bedrooms, two baths, nine hundred square feet. But look, you're right by, look, you're by everything. Look, look at the entrance to your condo. 
This is luxury. This is not the, the stuff they have in... Oh, in Vancouver, luxury! In Vancouver, and you look at these old apartments. This is older. This You could tell this is an older building, but you know what? Look at your surroundings. Luxury. Look at, look at, look at the view. This is it right here. Look at here. So stop telling me, guys, oh, desired areas, blah, blah, blah. You don't know what you're talking about, Mike. You, you don't own a factory. I know. But I'm telling you guys here what is going down. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think. Am I severely, severely delusional? Or, or is there something going on that I don't? Thanks for watching and share this video. Get it out there. Don't forget to join the channel by joining here. Don't forget to buy something at the shop. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook if you can. I'd, I'd really appreciate that if you could follow me on Facebook. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great, great evening, night, morning, wherever you are.